Hi viewers, welcome to another episode of Contact High. On today's show, we have a special guest, filmmaker, Miss Rosemary Rodriguez. Hey Rosemary, how are you today? Good, how are you? I'm okay. Uh, well, basically, what I'm gonna do is ask you about your film. You did a mm -hmm. film called Acts of Worship, mm -hmm. and I wanted to know about the, the story behind it, the, um, I guess the personal story, and also how you came to actually get the money together, how do you actually were able to see your idea come from an, uh, a thought from pen and paper to actual film. Mm -hmm. Okay, tell me about the origins. Okay, I, I, when I moved to New York after graduating from college, I went to NYU mm -hmm. for a year. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I decided then when I was, I don't know, I guess I was like 20, 21, mm -hmm. almost 22, that I wanted to make a film. Mm -hmm. That was like my dream from that point on. Then I, you know, and I, and I worked a little bit in independent film and I had different capacities and I worked around mm -hmm. actually making my film mm -hmm. so that I could learn like how to shoot, how to do sound, how to edit, mm -hmm. you know, all this stuff. And I think um, then what happened is personally I, you know, I had a lot of fun in New York and then I, I started, I always was like drank and used drugs or whatever, but mm -hmm. at some point my life got out of control here. Mm -hmm. And so my dreams kind of went out the window. Mm -hmm. And um, sometime around 30, uh, my life got back on track. Mm -hmm. And so I never lost that dream of making a film. Mm -hmm. And then it seemed like the only real way to let go of my past, which, you know, at 27, um, I found myself, you know, really screwed up, basically, mm -hmm. and, and, and homeless and whatever. And, you know, it, was, it was a lot of obstacles to overcome emotionally mm -hmm. to go from that point to like changing my life and then getting to my dream mm -hmm. was like the next step mm -hmm. and it just seemed like that was I felt very fortunate to have another chance mm -hmm. at life and that like I you know part of everything just came together and it wasn't really my plan consciously necessarily but just mm -hmm. to be able to express myself was like that's what came out first and I think it was really a way of letting go of my past. And I think first films are often very personal, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, and you just, you need to say what you need to say first so that you can move on to like expand your world into other things. But so I just thought because I, I had this problem with addiction and I know it's a really important and a huge problem in this world mm -hmm. and that most films, in my opinion, didn't deal with them very well, didn't mm -hmm. deal with that subject very Not well. seriously. Yeah. Not seriously, I'm very romanticized, or it's a comedy, or, you know. And so I felt like I wanted to portray something very realistic, mm -hmm. you know, and just down to earth, and this is what happens to people, and it can happen to anybody, and I just wanted to present it. Mike. Got that. I'm safe these two right here. All or nothing. I can't get rid of that one alone. You know that. I got some 20 bags I can swap before. That's all I can do. How much? I need cash, too, for dope. I'm sick. I'll give you three 20 bags and $20. Give me three 20 bags and $30, and you're still getting over. I should be getting 160 for these. This good spot. Laundry mat's good. How much is this for? $50. Give us a little description of the characters and mm -hmm. the synopsis and I guess the basic plot and summary of the film, what it's about. Well, the film, the film is basically, um, you know, it's about a woman who is homeless and who's a drug addict and um, that would be the personal world of my past, sort of. Um, mm -hmm. And it sort of sets up like what her daily routine is. Mm -hmm. um, she's in New York City and what her day-to-day thing is, mm -hmm. you know, how she gets high and who her, her friends are and mm -hmm. how she maintains herself. And then she, uh, she has this boyfriend and he lives down the hall from this other woman mm -hmm. and eventually they become, the other woman is Digna mm -hmm. and the, the homeless character is Alex and so Digna reaches out to try to help Alex mm -hmm. and so it's really about then the two women and um, how their lives, you know, come together. And the thing is, Digna is very successful, and mm -hmm. she's someone that you look at that has everything all together. Mm -hmm. She has, you know, her apartment is, is well done, and she has the boyfriend that loves her, and her mm -hmm. career is mm -hmm. doing really well. Mm -hmm. And so on the surface, you know, she looks like a very successful person, and then Alex is a very much considered a failure. Mm -hmm. um, 
And then, you know, but, but the truth is who really is, what's going on inside them is actually very similar. Digna's character wasn't originally an African-American character, but she decided to go with this actress because she mm -hmm. did such a splendid performance. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit about that and my, yeah. Uh, well, my, I, you know, part of, the, part of the thing about making a film is that, for me, is that mm -hmm. I always want to avoid stereotypes mm -hmm. and, and avoid, like, the typical thinking of, mm -hmm. like, what is this character, not only what is this character going to do in this mm -hmm. situation, but what, who, who are you going to put in that situation, exactly. you know? And to make it interesting, you know, because that's more real and it's mm -hmm. more life. It's mm -hmm. like, you know, we all go through these things. So I, I had initially um, thought the character was, was a Latina. Mm -hmm. And I saw a lot of Latina actors, uh, actresses. And um, Michael Hyatt came in to audition. And uh, part of the casting process, too, is just being open yeah, to, yeah, like, yeah. who shows up. Mm -hmm. And she <laughs> showed up to read Prostitute, you mm -hmm. know? And when... She, and I just thought that's tacky. Like mm -hmm. I just don't even want to go there, you mm -hmm. know. And um, so I just asked her. She was a good sport because I just asked her cold if she would, you know, consider just going outside and reading the scene and coming back in. Mm -hmm. And she just had a quality that was different than everyone else, mm -hmm. you know. And everyone was playing it very street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And again, that's that's stereotypical. Of like you know, you have a past, so then you're going to come out with this mm -hmm. attitude and this street thing. And she had a different approach to it. And I think that's what makes good actors is when they give you something that you sort of are hoping for and then they have a different take on it that's not typical. Mm -hmm. You know, just because she's a strong woman doesn't mean she has to be real tough and with an attitude. Yeah. So she had more of a mothering quality. Yeah, and I think that was a really good job casting. And I remember we had this discussion, like, you know, when we try to look at how, how the characters are. Cause I remember at first I was like, well, she's kind of like, you know, maternal black woman taking care of the white kid. And then you were telling me, well, if it had been reversed, then how would that look, the white woman taking care of some black child that was a complete drug addict? So that's another thing that's really odd. Like, you know, regardless of what your, your take is, what you're trying to, to put across the screen, it's like people are always going to perceive their own thing out of a film. And it's, it's funny how, like, it is so sensitive. Like, if you have a, a black character, white character, Asian or Latina, in any role, how it could totally change people's opinions on the piece. Yeah, you definitely. Know? And it's odd because uh, one of my producers, um, Frederick Sunwall, when he, when, you know, based on the script, mm -hmm. um, and when we were going through the casting process, mm -hmm. which Susan Shotmaker was the casting director, mm -hmm. um, when we went through that process, he actually pointed out to me, well, you know, now you've got a white character and a black character. Mm -hmm. You know, it's going to change the whole thing. People are going to be saying, talking about that. And I'm like, what are you talking mm -hmm. about? Like, I just don't even necessarily think that way. But mm -hmm. um, I'm just into, you know, whatever makes it more interesting mm -hmm. and, and makes it a better film. So he raised that issue. And it, it hasn't come up too much. But definitely people's experiences, um, you know, what they bring to it can, the, is, is their interpretation of the film. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, and I think to have, if it was reversed, and to have a black woman who is homeless and a drug addict, mm -hmm. you know, and then a white woman reaching out to save her, I think mm -hmm. that's what we see all the time, and I think that's mm -hmm. really offensive mm -hmm. on a lot of levels. Mm -hmm. So um, my, I just, my intention was not to go back to some sort of stereotype about what a black woman is, mm -hmm. but just a successful woman mm -hmm. who also is not traditionally, she's, she's the most beautiful woman in the movie. Mm -hmm but not in a traditional way either, mm -hmm. you know? So I just wanted to give her opportunity to, to be a strong character. Do you ever think about it? About what? Getting high. It's 
sometimes. Me too. My heart starts racing. I feel all shaky inside. Careful, baby. What uh, struck me about the movie is that it seems very realistic. Now, obviously you had some really splendid actors. How many people in some of the other scenes that were just people that you like uh, you met or people who actually had substance abuse problems while, while they were, were filming? Yeah, no one, no oh, one. Wow. <laughs> Even the woman I, that was being photographed? <laughs> um, no, the w no, she's an actress, oh, wow. Nikki that, Tanner. That yeah, was, she's that was, great. <laughs> that was great she job. She was amazing. I, I thought, know. you know, you just <laughs> like, you know, found people, was like, yeah. Yeah, well, a lot of people in the film understand that world. I mean, yeah. you know, we're all from <laughs> New York City and, and if you're an artist <laughs> in New York City, you tend to take it mm -hmm. all in, mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> so it's not like, you know, the normal, quote, normal person mm -hmm. or something that just kind of goes to work and, mm -hmm. and necessarily maybe walks by people. I mean, people take it in, and we all have varied experiences. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I have a lot of interesting friends, mm -hmm. basically. And a lot of them showed up, and, and some people do understand that world much like I do. Mm -hmm. So um, they just showed up and took it seriously. There is one scene where... Um, you know, it's, it's on St. Mark's, and they're, and they're buying drugs, and, you know, it's supposed to be over on, uh, you know, more deeper into the Lower East Side, but that's where we shot it. And there was a woman who just sort of showed up, and she mm. was kind of nodding out, just standing there, and she's eating a lollipop, and she had pudding at the same time, and she's the only person, actually, that I think she was very high, and she wanted mm. to just come and mm -hmm. stand in line, and so she's the only person. Oh, okay. And I don't, I don't, mem I don't know who she is. She took off really quickly after, mm -hmm. and so I didn't even get to really connect with her. But, but yeah. Anna did, who plays Alex. She, yeah. they spoke. So. Okay. And how did you find her? She was really great. In the yeah, film. I saw like two hundred um, actresses wow. for that part, and um, you know, no one came close to mm -hmm. her as far as what I saw. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, Anna is incredible actress and very willing to go anywhere mm -hmm. that she has to go and not worry about her vanity mm -hmm. which uh, was key mm -hmm. to this part mm -hmm. it wasn't like she was going to look pretty through the whole thing mm -hmm. and she was okay with that wow that's great Cause like i said it's just the character is just so believable in this film yeah really a compliment to yeah she actually she she wasn't available mm -hmm. when um when i asked her and she kind of turned See, it down oh, wow. So, you know, that's why I saw some more people mm -hmm. trying to find um, the right person. But she was already in my head, mm -hmm. and, uh, and she was in a play at the time, and she didn't want to drop out of the play. Mm -hmm. So we basically ended up pushing back two months to wait for her. Mm -hmm. so she stayed good and just waited. I did. Wait, well, like two weeks before starting the shoot, mm -hmm. um, we pushed back for two months. So a lot of people weren't happy about that, and we lost a lot of crew, but, mm -hmm. you know, it worked out well. Okay, now talk about this also. How do you find a, a good crew also? Like, wh what, what is the process of finding people you can actually work with? Because y when you're ready to shoot, you need people that are going to be on time and, and mm -hmm. do the job right. How, how do you search out the people that are really responsible and you can work with? Well, I think just from, from working um, in film and from just, you know, having a lot of really incredibly talented friends that, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, are willing to help which you don't even realize how much people have inside mm -hmm. and so you know the opportunity for you all to work together mm -hmm. and um, and then people bring on other people so it was either people were you know there because um, they really wanted to be there mm -hmm. or in the other tier of people that were there were people that were in one capacity you know like a PA or you know a grip or something and they wanted to do something else mm -hmm. and so it was kind of like they got to do something a little higher up on that little okay, chain, see, you see, know. Yeah. So then they were into it for that reason. Mm -hmm. So they're still trying to prove themselves, and they're working mm -hmm. really hard. Mm -hmm. So everyone's heart was really in it, especially, mm -hmm. um, you know, I've, my experience with not having a lot of money is that it's it can be a blessing in a way because mm -hmm. you have a lot of people who are showing up really just out of pure love, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. no other reason. Piece, yeah. yeah, and it's like, and they work like dogs, you know. You have to believe in the piece really strongly to do that. Absolutely. Yeah. And I'll probably never have that experience again mm. to that degree, you know, because mm. I, I couldn't, with a good conscience, probably be able to get people to do what they did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk a little bit about your husband also. Your husband's in the film and mm -hmm. also plays the husband of Digna. Mm -hmm. So talk a little bit about how was it like to collaborate 
with someone you're married to. And, mm. and <laughs> it's it was difficult for us mm -hmm. to uh, work together actually. Mm -hmm. um, but I, you know, I the character was not like him. The character mm -hmm. um, for a couple of years was really like a Wall Street type of guy. Mm -hmm. So you know, the casting and how the script evolved from doing mm -hmm. a lot of readings. Also, readings are key, I think, mm -hmm. to preparing to, for a shoot. Mm -hmm. And um, I had like four readings with mm -hmm. actors, and so it evolved into, you know, I needed to have some, one of the characters. He is the character that the audience represents. The normal person okay. in the yeah. audience, you know, like working class he's just a regular guy he doesn't understand the addiction thing mm -hmm. he just thinks like you know you just work hard make some money get married have a family what's the problem mm -hmm. like that's it mm -hmm. that's enough you mm -hmm. know and and that is enough that's fine but he doesn't understand that's not enough for digna mm -hmm. you know and he doesn't understand what she's trying to overcome and the secrets that she keeps and again you know he's like the normal person mm -hmm. that just lives life mm -hmm. you know and so um, he's also the character that I wanted to inject humor into the script mm -hmm. and just kind of take out to, to help represent Digna's world, but take out of the movie, this heavy movie, and just like he does stand up comedy. Yeah, yeah. So when it became clear that I wanted him to be that character, then I could have had an opportunity to do something really weird and like throw a little couple minutes of stand up comedy, like in the middle of the film, mm -hmm. just to kind of give the audience a break and just take them out. And, you know, and I think it works well. show you the new rhythm I got? Yes. What the hell are you doing now? I gotta go look for her, Anthony. Oh, dig no. I gotta go look, man. Even if I don't find her, I gotta look. I don't wanna fight. I'm sorry, all right? Well, then let me go. I can't let you go. What the fuck you mean you can't I let haven't me. seen you act like this since you lost our baby. Why the fuck are you bringing that up now? When did you want me to bring it up? Never! I can't go through this hell well, again. Well, then you don't have to. I don't know what to do, okay? I didn't know what to do then. And believe it or not, I don't know what this to do different. now. But yeah, this is the about same way. helping someone who is in trouble. Digna, you're the one in trouble. You're in trouble. I love you. Don't you get it? All the things you want, they're happening. Everything's going so good right now for you. For both of us. Maybe it's just going too good. The story is very personal. You did mm -hmm. have a substance abuse problem at one mm -hmm. time. Both characters seem like, you know, maybe they were part of you. Are both the girls in the, in the film, Alex and Digna, both part of part of you? Yeah, you I think I think they are. I think that isn't necessarily conscious, mm -hmm. con a conscious thing, but um, definitely. Like I said, making the film and and having that character and being around that, you know, I was. It, it was really a part of. Uh, of me as a female and mm -hmm. also as an addict and, and also trying to like get out in the world and like express myself is like trying to find my own voice mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. feeling like I have the right to express it, mm -hmm. which I think a lot of women struggle with. Mm -hmm. And um, and being that I had done so many things that I felt really ashamed about and that was never really in my plan of life, yeah, like yeah. it just happened to me, yeah. um, you know, I had a lot to overcome to be able to feel like, well, I have the right to like say this or do this. And um, making a film gave me that place. And you know, Alex's character, she doesn't really have a voice. You know, mm -hmm. you're, you're meeting s really two women who are at, the bo at their bottom. Mm -hmm. One's an emotional bottom and one is an emotional, physical, spiritual bottom. Mm -hmm. You know, one is just emotional and spiritual. Um, but you know, Alex in the end, um, she finds her voice. You know, and that's when she is expressing herself. Okay. You know, and there's and there's voiceover in the end, and um, you know, Digna m much more so is represents things that I struggle with now. Mm -hmm. You know, just how how do you go through things in life, and then how do you deal with success? You know, I think it's sort of a myth that like mm -hmm. people think you're gonna make some money mm -hmm. and you're gonna be successful, and then you have no problems anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, and that you're not afraid anymore. And I think it's just the opposite. You know, I, not that I'm reach the level at all close to where I want to be in life. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you, like, you reach a little bit of success. And for me, success, you know, coming from where I come from is, you know, being married, being a wife, trying to be a daughter, being a sister, being a responsible person who can go to work, who can, you know, also go and, and try to make a film and mm -hmm. do all this stuff is like, 
can I really do this? You know, it's scary. Yeah. It's like, what right do I have to do this? What right do I have to, you know, try to go beyond what's just mm -hmm. kind of a normal middle of the ground kind of place? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like, yeah, that's scary stuff. It's not even the, the ex expectations that people have for you coming from your background, basically. And you're sort of going above and beyond that. Yeah, I think yeah. like a lot of us struggle with that. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah. You no, so people try to bring you down too. A lot of people, they see you're trying to do something with your life. And they, and a lot of people who don't even put any effort mm -hmm. into doing it, they're sort of jealous or just mm -hmm. hate you based on that. Yeah, and I don't, I don't, yeah, absolutely. I think it's not like a clear cut thing. I mm -hmm. think most of us grow up and we're mm -hmm. told, we're kept down. Our mm -hmm. spirits are sort of kept down or, or what's expected of us. And when we express, well, I want to do this, not yeah. this. Yeah. We always have to take the practical route, mm -hmm. you know, and do like the safe thing. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what most of the world does. I'm mm -hmm. trying not to do that, although I'm always struggling with that, yeah. you know, because then I question, why am I trying to make films? Why am I trying to do this? You know, it's painful. Yeah. It's heartbreaking, mm -hmm. but it's also awesome yeah, yeah. at the same time. So not everyone wants to deal <laughs> with all that, you know? Yeah, I know, like, the first thing I've shot, it's like, I always get so ambitious about shooting something, and then the day comes when I have to, I'm like, oh, damn, what the hell have I gotten myself right. into? What the, wh wh why am I doing this? This is, like, mm -hmm. serious work. This is, is overwhelming. How, you know, and I'm just me, <laughs> you know? But then after you're finally finished and you're looking at the pieces, like, wow, you know, this is a true accomplishment. And it's not better than, you know, basically when you work for other people, you're sort of working for them to, you know, do their vision, their project. Mm -hmm. But then when you get to some, see something of your own belief, of your own vision come to fruition, that's such a, a splendid feeling. It's the most amazing. amazing feeling it in is, the world. It really is. Talk about the whole film festival experience. Have you won any awards for the film? Yeah, well, we, um, you know, I'm very fortunate because, you know, we worked really hard and we mm -hmm. got to go to Sundance. That's oh, where we great. premiered the film at Sundance. Mm -hmm. And then we went on to Rotterdam. And then I spent all last year, um, you know, going to film festivals mm -hmm. and, and, yeah, getting some awards mm -hmm. all over. And, and it's a real, it was a real trip, mm -hmm. you know. I, I, it was a real lesson in the business of filmmaking, mm -hmm. you know, and that's, that's something that I think is really important for people that are starting out to really embrace. Mm -hmm. And I was very naive, thinking, well, you just make a film that's good enough, mm -hmm. it's going to find its way, and it's going to take care of itself. Okay. Wrong. Yeah. It's so you thought totally you'd get wrong. the distribu distribution and money and funding to just have the film in the theaters? Yeah, that, just yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. Just because it's a good film. <laughs> yeah. Wrong. <laughs> a lot of good films out there. They don't see the light of day. I know. know. They don't even make it to, to any of the festivals, you know? Yeah. Look at like John Cassavetes. He did a lot of films that were people that were not name actors at the time, and a film like Robert Downey's Putney Smoke. Mm -hmm. uh, w w how would you compare like a film, independent film of that generation to now? W what do you think are the pros and cons of doing it now? Well, I think um, you know John Cassavetes. Mm -hmm. He acted and he made money so mm -hmm. that he could make his films. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like he was getting money for his films, sure. and mm -hmm. you know he struggled yeah. with that. That's mm -hmm. my understanding. Mm -hmm. um, and I think anyone that wants to do a film like that, sure. I shot my film on film. Mm -hmm. It was important to me because it was my dream for so long yeah, yeah, yeah. to actually shoot film. <laughs> and I wanted to go through that process. Yeah, yeah. Same know? process that Fellini, did, Hitchcock. Yeah, I wanted to the do the real yeah. thing, which is mm -hmm. a different process. Mm -hmm. It's a different crew. It's a mm -hmm. whole different thing than mm -hmm. just like, you know, having a digital video camera, mm -hmm. just getting out there and doing mm -hmm. it. And I also, you know, just uh, used you know, SAG actors, mm -hmm. um, which puts it into a whole other realm also. And um, and I think all of that shows. Now, my next film, that might be what I do, is just do it in DV, mm -hmm. maybe. I don't know yet. Yeah. Depends on how much money I'm able to mm -hmm. raise. Mm -hmm. I still like film. Yeah. It's still a certain a aesthetic that film has that video doesn't have, even though they've um, come a great way with the video technology, though. Mm -hmm. It does look really great, but mm -hmm. still, the film experience is just, you know, comparable it's different yeah yeah definitely and I guess uh, what else would you like to share about the film if anyone was watching this and they're interested in film mm -hmm. um, you know I think the important thing is really to try to understand the business a little more mm -hmm. and to understand that you know it, it's sort of misleading to think in my opinion that you can just get a digital video camera for mm -hmm. 5,000 bucks and mm -hmm. go out and make a film mm -hmm. you can do that Part of the problem with a lot of these films is like mm -hmm. the acting is really bad, mm -hmm. you know, because <laughs> if you're going to throw your friends in front of a camera, mm -hmm. so 
you know, I think that a lot of it shows, like, like a lot of films, you know, it does come down to, like, writing a good story, having good actors, mm -hmm. and then finding a, a way to express what you want to say mm -hmm. through that, through the medium. Mm -hmm. Now, in order to get it seen, even if it's a small film like that, um, you still need to have something that, that means to get it out, mm -hmm. either broadcast or in mm -hmm. theaters or whatever. And um, I, I feel very jaded about the state of independent film mm -hmm. because there isn't, isn't any independent films, very few that actually get out there. Yeah. There's really no distributors that are very willing to take risks. Mm -hmm. um, there's little niches mm -hmm. or the, you know, some smaller distributors that basically none of them have any money anyway. But mm -hmm. Whatever they're going to do, they'll take like gay films, they'll take little foreign films, or there's mm -hmm. little niches, mm -hmm. you know. And um, other than them, it's just bigger companies mm -hmm. that are basically all owned by studios. Mm -hmm. So, w what happened to independent film? You know, any any companies that were doing well in the '90s mm -hmm. got bought up. So there isn't any independent film anymore. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really exist you know, on a very small level. So I think that's, a, I don't even like that term anymore. Because yeah. people that go out and, and make, and like I did, and spend years and like, you know, save all your money and then raise a little bit of money after you get a shot and then try to get it out there, you know, that's, you can't compete. Well, I want to thank you for um, being you. here on the show, Rosemary. It's really a pleasure. And I'm glad we finally got to do this. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Illumide. No, no problem. Thanks. Okay. So, uh, viewers, uh, thank you for watching, and tune in really soon. Goodbye. <laughs>